You're welcome to Grizzly Tales for Gruesome Kids. A series of cautionary tales for lovers of squeam. On a scale of one to ten for bodily disgustingness, this tale is 15 and climbing. It's about beak burrowing. That's P-L-R-F. Pick, <coughs> lick, <coughs> roll, <coughs> flick. <coughs> Only we're not talking stupid spiders, you understand. I call this tale Revenge of the Bogeyman. D. Duda, known as Digger D. Duda to her friends, would pick her nose anywhere. Her parents were naturally appalled. Little girls are supposed to be pretty and sweet, not have Olympic walls in their bedrooms to measure how high they can flick fogies. It's not shot put. It's not put. Want to go? If her parents complained about Dee flicking green ones around the house, she said, Would you prefer me to eat them? No, it's just that they stick, dear. The other day I found one in the middle of a cake. Yum, yum. And another one on your father's head. He should have used it to stick a wig on. <laughs> That's enough, Dee. If you carry on digging at the rate you're digging now, eventually you'll dig out the bogeyman. Dee gasped. Her mother shrieked. The finger fell from the nose hole. The bogeyman? What does he do? That you do not want to know. Her father was right. What the bogeyman did was best left a secret. <laughs> that night, Dee woke with a start. The room was empty, but there was a soft, faraway voice in her head. Dig deeper. It hissed. There's gold in that there nose, Dee. Dig deeper. Pick faster. There's magic in them bogeys. The last thing Dee wanted was to disturb the bogeyman, but the temptation was too great. Dee jiggled out a big one and flicked it at the wall. Only instead of sliding down the wall like a slug, it steamed and sizzled and turned inside out like a green Yorkshire pudding. <gasps> Are you the bogeyman? quivered Dee. Indeed I am. And you are in a whole heap of trouble. But a little voice in my head told me to pick you. That was me. For ten years I've put up with your fingers, trying to dig me out of house and home. I've had enough. How would you like it if you had to sleep in a steel cage for fear of being plucked from your bed? Or if every time you took a bath, a huge finger poked up the plug hole and tried to grab you? I have to carry a pickaxe all the time, you know, in case I'm snatched and need something to grip onto the nostrils with. I don't think I'd like it at all. Just because bogeys are short on brains doesn't mean we don't have feelings, you know? Now, are you going to stop picking on me, or am I going to have to make you? The question took Digger D by surprise. But I love picking my nose, she said, without thinking. So the bogeyman ate her. She squirted through a gummy green throat and popped out into a cave of smooth white bone. 
she heard scratching in the walls as she slipped down a hole into a steep pink tunnel that ended in a huge boulder. Only this boulder was warm and was picking and poking. Digger Dee Doodah found herself perched on the finger of a giant who rolled her up and flicked her at the wall. Help! He thought she was a bogey, and his giant wife must have thought so too, because she trod on Dee and carried her across the room on the bottom of her shoe. I'm not a bogey, sobbed Dee, as the giantess stamped on the fire bellows and kicked her off into a bowl of water. Only it was more like a lake. And the owner had a drippy nose and a paw the size of a porpoise. Dee skidded through the valley of toast, over the mountain of butter, and banged her head on the marmalade jar. A bottle of milk crashed onto the table next to her. Above the bottle was the face of the giant's ugly son. <laughs> Dee had to get out of there. Boys were brutal flickers, and if he thought she was a bogey... She started to run, but the movement caught the boy's eye. <laughs> she was safe, or at least she thought she was. This was the son's secret stash where he stored his unwanted pickings. <laughs> Whoa, lovely. Don't remember putting this bogey under the table. Nice fat one and all. I am not fat, screamed Dee, but the boy couldn't hear her. Don't mind if I do, he said. And without a thought for hygiene or manners, or Dee for that matter, he popped the girl bogey into his mouth. <laughs> Dee fought for her life as the chomping chamber worked her back towards the gaping throat. If she didn't do something quickly, she was going stomach side. She bit the wet tongue as hard as she could. <coughs> now do you get it? asked the bogeyman. I do, she said. Now do you see how dangerous the world can be for bogeys when we're picked? Licked, rolled and flicked. I do, she said. And do you swear never to pick your nose and put a bogey's life at risk again? I do, she said. And with that, he whisked her back through time and space until he reached her bedroom. Thank you, she said, as the bogeyman crawled back up her nose. My pleasure! His voice echoed like a cry in a canyon as he climbed up the inside of her nostril and made his way home to Mount Sinus. Ow! Sorry, I slipped. Had to use the pickaxe. Digger de doo never picked her nose again. She picks her ears now, and only half an inch to go before she digs up the Wax Woman. Then she'll be sorry. <laughs> to stop Spindleshanks picking his nose, I've offered to pick it for him. Try this one. How does it feel? That was your brain, Spindleshanks. <laughs> a family of four, but they all seem so down. They've just bought a house in Grizzly Town. Pleasantville, Happy Town, not on your nelly. This neighbourhood's different, so stay glued to your telly. Feeling safe in the city or snug in the dales? Stick around for more Grizzly Tales. <laughs>